T-shirt video mock-up templates is an untapped Etsy niche that's waiting to make you rich in 2025. The demand for video mock-ups is skyrocketing. Stores like Mock-ups Havens and Nordly Studio are already making in tens of thousands of dollars selling wall art video mock-ups. But here's the kicker. T-shirt video mock-up templates have virtually zero competition. The problem? Creating these high-quality, scroll-stopping t-shirt video mock-ups is tough, and most sellers give up before they even start. That's exactly why I'm here. In this video, I'll teach you how to create scroll-stopping t-shirt mock-ups like this. I'll break everything down into simple, actionable steps to help you jump on this trend before it gets saturated. Before we dive in, there's one crucial concept many sellers misunderstand, which prevents them from achieving the results they want. When you think of video mock-ups, most sellers focus on simply adding motion to static images. You might assume that running a still mock-up through an AI tool and adding a smiling head or simple walking motion will create an effective video template. However, what they fail to realize is that video mock-ups are powerful sales tools designed to boost product sales, not just showcase movement. Our t-shirt video mock-up will highlight two important things to help your buyers increase sales. The detailed design, and the t-shirt's fabric quality. We'll achieve this using a simple animation technique called 2.5D Parallax Animation. 2.5D Parallax Animation adds depth to a still image, making it come alive. By moving the subject and background in opposite directions, it creates a sense of depth and makes your mock-up more engaging. Let's add a 2.5D Parallax Animation. I'll start by opening a blank t-shirt image in Photoshop. First, we need to separate the model, our subject, from the background. Make a selection around the model and press Ctrl Shift plus J to duplicate it onto a new layer. Now the subject and background are on separate layers, however, the background has incomplete areas from the cutout. To fix this, we'll use Content Aware Fill. Select the background, go to Edit, Fill, Choose Content Aware and click Fill. If you're using the latest version of Photoshop, you can also use Generative Fill for this step. But to keep this tutorial useful for those with older versions, we're sticking with Content Aware Fill. After filling, there may be some uneven edges. We'll smooth these out using the Clone Stamp tool. Select the Clone Stamp and then use Alt Key to copy from neighboring pixel and fill in. Now, this process can be slow and time-consuming, so I will speed through this part, but feel free to take your time to ensure everything looks seamless. When you're done separating, create a new document with the Etsy standard size. Pick 2000 by 2000 pixel, then click Create. This will be the main project. Go back to the project containing your separated subject and background. Using the Move tool, drag the subject to the main project and also drag the background. You can cancel out the tab afterwards. Now it's time to add the animation. Go to Window and click on Timeline. This opens the interface where we'll apply the animations. But we don't want to animate this image alone. We want to make it reusable as an Etsy template. We'll achieve this using nested smart objects. Right-click on the background layer and select Convert to Smart Object. Then, right-click on the model layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now, right-click the model layer again and select Edit Contents. This will open our isolated model in a new tab. Here, you will add your placeholder design and make it a reusable template. If you're already familiar with creating the template, feel free to skip to the animation process. Grab your placeholder and drag and drop it onto the t-shirt. But now we need to arrange it according to the flow of the body shape. You can achieve that either by just adjusting the perspective of the placeholder to the t-shirt or taking it a step further by adding more details, taking care of the folds and body shape of the subject. So to take it a step further, while you're on the basic transform tool, you can right click and then select warp. Now using the mouse, just try to follow the flow of the body and align the placeholder. You see the flow is coming like this, so we need to drag this point like so and also move this point like this. There you go. 
Now, be gentle and take your time to achieve a balanced, well-wrapped result. Now we will add some shadows to make it look more natural and realistic. To do that, duplicate the model layer, move it above the placeholder, go to Image, Adjustment and click on Desaturate. This will desaturate the image. Now clip it so the effect is applied to only the placeholder design. Then change the blend mode to hard lie. Now go image, adjustment and curves. Move the slider below to increase the darker areas and move down the slider above to increase the highlights or bright areas. Adding the shadows and highlights make the design look realistic and blends more natural. Now save and close this tab. On your main composition, you can see that all the changes you made reflect it. That's the advantage of using a smart object. Now below on the timeline panel, click on create a video timeline. This will automatically add the layers in the timeline. I'll rename this layer as background and model. Use this slider to control how long layers appear on the timeline. On the layers, you'll find a drop-down key. Clicking on this will reveal three items, transform, opacity, and style. Notice there's a stopwatch beside each of these items. This stopwatch icon controls the addition of keyframes. Let's quickly talk about keyframes and how they work. Keyframes are points in your timeline that mark where changes happen, like transform, opacity, and style of our layers. Think of them as bookmarks that tell Photoshop where something should be at certain times. By placing keyframes at different spots on the timeline, you create the movement between them. For example, to add 2.5 parallax animation, we want our t-shirt layer to move towards our eyes. I'll set a transform keyframe at the start and press Ctrl T for transform tool and make the t-shirt layer small. Next, I will add another keyframe at the end position and make this layer bigger, zooming into the placeholder design. Now you can slide the playhead to preview the movement between these two keyframes. Similarly, you can add keyframes for opacity and style parameters of the layers too. As you know, for 2.5 parallax effect, the background should move in the opposite direction of the subject. So now I will select the background layer and add a keyframe. Make the layer bigger at the start and then add another keyframe at the end and make the layer smaller. You can now preview it. Doesn't the opposite movement add interesting depth on the image? Now let us add few more scenes to make this video template functional. Select the t-shirt layer and duplicate it. This will be the second scene. For this scene, we're going to create a smooth slide panning effect. Click on the stopwatch icon before transform to add a keyframe for transform. Move the subject sideways like this. Move your slider to the end of the animation and move the subject to the middle. Preview it to see the movements. Again, duplicate the t-shirt layer to make a third scene. For this scene, we'll zoom into the fabric. Again, click the drop-down arrow and toggle on the stopwatch from transform keyframe. Zoom into the fabric to show the texture and quality of the mock-up. Slide to the end of the animation and a little reduce the size of the t-shirt, like so. This will create a slow zoom out effect. I feel there are some minute details missing. The scene transitioned abruptly. Up until now we have used transform keyframes. Now let us make use opacity keyframes to add some fade in transitions between each scene. 
To do that, add a new solid color fill layer. Make three copies of it. Move one to the beginning of the animation. Move the second between the first and second scene, and finally the third between the second and last scene. For the first transition, we will have two keyframes for the opacity. At the beginning of the animation, keep the opacity to 100. At the end of the animation, set the opacity to 0. This will create a slow fade and opening effect, great for mock-up reveals. For the second and third transitions, we are going to apply similar effects in keyframes. Toggle on the keyframe for opacity at the start of the animation. Reduce Norge down the opacity to zero. Move the slider to the middle of the first and second scene. Then increase the opacity to 100. Lastly, move to the end of the layer and again reduce the opacity to zero. This creates a slow fade in transitions between the scenes. Repeat the process for the third transition. Now to further pop out the animation, let's add some fall leaves particle motion to actually pop it off. You can do that in two ways. First, you can download a transparent or black background leaf particles online. You can get some free ones from Victezi or similar sites. Or second way is to create yours in Photoshop from scratch. I will quickly show you both ways. Here I downloaded this leaf particles from Victezi. Drag and drop it in your project. It comes with a background. Of course, the best layer style to get rid of the black is screen. So set the blend mode to screen. Now, if you play it, you can see the particles falling. This adds more live and realism to it. For the second method, download a PNG leaf, drag and drop it on your main composition. Reduce the size and position it somewhere on the canvas. Make several copies of it and position them at separate areas. When done, select all the layers and group them. Now add a Gaussian blur filter to it. Just reduce the intensity of the blur based on the distance of each leaf particle. Now right click and convert the group to a smart object. This nests all the leaf layers into a single layer. Right click on the layer again and click on edit content. Now you can animate the particles separately in this new tab. Now pick any of the leaf layer. Click the group drop down arrow to show all the layers. Add a transform keyframe, move the keyframe to the end of the layer, and then position your leaf a little above. And you can also play around with the rotation and perspective. This creates a slight fall down effects. Take your time to animate the rest of the leaf particles. When done, save and close the tab. Now on the main project, add a transform keyframe to the smart object containing the leaves. Increase the size of the layer significantly. Then, at the end of the animation, reduce the size. Click the playhead to preview. Wow, isn't it looking good? When done, save the template as a PSD document, which you can upload to sites like Etsy or Creative Market, and earn some passive income from it. Now our video template is ready. But wait, don't go away yet. You've seen how to create t-shirt mock-up video templates in this tutorial. But here's the thing, you're still missing some critical pieces. For example, 
how to use AI tools to generate blank mock-up images, make them look unbelievably realistic. Discover advanced animation techniques beyond 2.5D parallax that can make your mock-ups truly stand out. These are just a few of the topics I couldn't include in this video due to time limitations. That's why I'm creating an in-depth course to cover all of this and more, giving you the tools to fully master video mock-up creation. It's now available for pre-order at a special discounted price. If you want to take your skills to the next level, don't miss this opportunity. Click the link below to pre-order and save your spot. Don't wait for this trend to get saturated. Start creating your own video mock-ups now and get ahead of the curve.